Let's do the dump. This is gonna be, ooh, a pretty good video. I definitely wanna get the cinnabar out, that's for sure. And then I have a surprise, incredible piece to show you guys. So we're gonna learn a little bit about cinnabar today and how to identify it and a little bit about the history. So here we go. Let's talk a little bit about cinnabar here. And I'm also gonna show you this piece, this vase, it comes with the stand. So, um, as you guys can see, this bright red that's carved uh, totally looks like what's called cinnabar. Okay, what did we see here? Okay, look at this. I am so excited about this. I am so excited about this. This is so pretty. Look at this. So yes, lobster claw, and then what does it say? Anne Coplick Designs. I feel like I have seen that, and do I, do I have a ring? I feel like I have a ring that's Anne Coplick. Oh, but look at how beautiful, <laughs> I'm dying, I'm dying. This is so gorgeous. Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, AKA Lilyworks, and this is a reselling channel. Um, and today we have a big giant jewelry jar. Let me show you. Here is the jewelry jar. All right, and I paid $50, $55. Well, I did get a tiny bit of a discount, but here is the jewelry jar, and we're gonna get into this. Also, we're gonna be talking a little bit about Cinnabar. The reason I got this piece right here, and I saw that in there already, I ended up purchasing this piece for myself, and then I have a surprise, incredible, piece to show you guys. So we're going to learn a little bit about cinnabar today and how to identify it and a little bit about the history. And yeah, I'm excited to get into a jewelry jar with you guys. You guys can hear the piano. Like I said, it's literally a thing. It's like every time I turn on the video to start recording, someone's playing the piano. And if you can't tell, that's my five-year-old. She is like obsessed with playing the piano now. She already knows like five songs and she's just, she's ready. So yeah, let's get into this jewelry jar. Let's see if we can find anything good. And as always, make sure if you guys are sorting your jewelry jars, make sure you have a, a yes bin, a maybe bin, and a crafting bin ready to go. So let's get into it. Okay, and this is a massive jar. I haven't purchased a jewelry jar in a long time, and so I decided to purchase one. And this vendor, I purchased like three jewelry jars from, and this one was the biggest. So what she ends up doing is like taping a piece of jewelry to the top. Um, some of them is because it can't fit into the jar itself. And I don't know, maybe some of it is to tempt the <laughs> buyer to buy this. So this was what was taped on top. And this is definitely like a crafting piece. It looks like it was a brooch at one time. And now it's just a really pretty medallion. So this will probably go into the craft lot. And then let's see if we can make our $55 back plus right now. This is just a lot of fun. Oh boy, I see hair clips coming out. All right, let's do the dump. This is gonna be, ooh, a pretty good video. Definitely wanna get the cinnabar out, that's for sure. Oh my gosh, beads are just falling. I don't wanna break anything. I do see some brooches. Um, it looks like some of these pieces were for sale in her booth already. You can see that she still has the tags on some of them. I wanna get this one out, so. All right, so here we go. Let's talk a little bit about cinnabar here. And I'm also gonna show you this piece, this vase, it comes with the stand. 
So, um, as you guys can see, this bright red that's carved um, totally looks like what's called cinnabar. And so what cinnabar actually is, and I, you guys, have you noticed I painted my nails <laughs> to like match? I decided we're going to talk about this today since I bought three pieces. And red is the most popular color in China because it stands for, I think, good luck and happiness. So when you see this bright red that's carved, you might want to take a look, make sure that you are not passing on some cinnabar. So what cinnabar actually is, it's like cinnabar is not this itself. I think it's the um, material that is put inside the lacquer. So when you, when you go to list it, um, you will see a lot of listings that say cinnabar lacquer or lacquered cinnabar. So they'll mix the, that red cinnabar um, into the lacquer itself to create this look. And so basically it, um, cinnabar is one of the earliest man-made materials and it kind of ends up looking more like a plastic than a stone so it's kind of warm to the touch um, and it almost feels like a resin. So some pieces could be potentially resin that look like cinnabar but we're going to get into like how you can tell the difference. So what happened, how they made cinnabar I'd say centuries ago, maybe like 2300 years ago I think, or yeah 2300, is what they would do is they would take the lacquer tree and start you know chopping away at it and then the juice would come out of the tree. I don't know if it was sap, I think it was referred to as juice. <laughs> so and then when the juice dried it made that lacquer. So what they ended up doing is they took the lacquer, mixed it with the cinnabar itself, and I think they mixed another uh, mineral or material to make black. I think it was like carbon. And um, so then they would paint a layer, let it dry, it would take a couple days, paint another layer, let it dry, and then they would have a thick layer of the lacquered cinnabar and then they would end up carving into it. So that is kind of like a clue um, of like how you can tell if it's genuine is it's going to be carved layers. And they also what they did is they the middle part of cinnabar is mostly most of the time it's wood 90 percent of the time it'll be wood with the lacquer coating um, layers on top of the wood and then um, some other other times it would be like lacquer coating on brass like this face here and so you can even see on the bottom that some of the lacquer coating is coming off at the bottom but you definitely want to look up close at the pieces to see if you can see layering and now resin could have bubbles in it or um, seams or things like that. This, if you looked up close, let's see if I can zoom in here. All right, I cannot figure out to focus. I thought I figured out how to um, zoom in and focus. <laughs> cannot figure that out while it's recording. So anyways, um, yeah, there goes the piano <laughs> for you guys. Okay, um, just bear with me. But if you look up close, Obviously we can see really intricate designs here, but then along here you can just see there's imperfections, there's carve marks, there's layering going on. Um, and then I think a lot of the earlier pieces were layered with like black layers and red layers, so there's some depth to the pieces. These are probably newer, they're probably not thousands of years old. I'm really excited though to show you the, the one piece I got. <laughs> I'm so exciting, excited to show you. So anyways, um, and then definitely this is going into the yes bin. I will be selling that. All right, let's see what else we can get. All right, this looks like a silver tone bangle and there are no marks in here. I have tape sticking to me here. Okay, so 
cannot find my magnet. Wow. I'm so prepared, but I'm pretty sure this is not sterling silver. This is going into the maybe. Um, I'll just look more into it. Okay, so sticking with the Asian theme, right? We have this little guy. Kind of looks old porcelain. I am not familiar with selling these things. I'm not sure if this would sell for anything. So I'm just going to keep moving and putting that into the maybe. Okay, what did we see here? Okay, look at this. I am so excited about this. I am so excited about this. This is so pretty. Look at this. So this is a little guilloche enamel painted rose piece. This is probably Art Deco. And yes, it is sterling. So Janine over at Slow Happy Vintage just picked up a ton of sterling guilloche enamel pieces on her channel. So you can go check those out. There is a little tiny uh, mark right there. You guys see that? I'm not sure what it means. Um, but then it also has the C clasp. C clasps are older. See that right there? A little C. And there is a little bit of enamel loss to the side, but that doesn't matter. I'm still selling it. It's still gorgeous. That is exciting. Yay! So we have two definite yes pieces out of here. And that might be worth the $50 I spent. All right, we have this beautiful cameo and I want to see if it is actual carved. I don't think it's carved shell, but it is a really pretty brooch pendant and you can tell if it's like a carved shell. Um, others have explained it better than I can, but basically if you look at a sponge and this part is the green layer and this part is the yellow layer of a sponge, you're carving away at that green layer to leave, um, to leave the green right here and the yellow would be showing through. I'm not sure if I'm doing a great job, but yeah, this one's actually a little tricky because it, do it totally looks carved, but no mark. I mean, this isn't gold. You can see the silver coming through right here, and I don't think there's any marks. It does look like it needs to be clean though. So yeah, I will definitely sell this no matter what, and then look into that a little bit further. Okay, we have this dirty piece and I think I'm seeing a book chain to be honest like these little faux pearls are on this like book chain situation so I'm wondering if this would clean up nicely Ooh, it's actually a single layer that is fancy huh I think I would sell this this is lovely and old I like it. That one is a yes. All right, guys, we have a turkey. <laughs> what is the deal? I like if I'm making a jewelry jar, I don't think throwing like random things is helpful <laughs> because this is not jewelry. I don't understand this. Yeah, I'm just going to give it to my kids. They're farm animals. That's where that's going. Okay, this looks like a napkin ring. Oh, but it's a cricket. I believe this is a metal cricket napkin ring thing. All right, we'll set that aside. See if there's any more. I mean, if there's two of them, I could sell it. I've sold napkin rings plenty of times. Okay. Ooh, we have a Sarah Coventry white enamel silver tone, like grapey leaf thing. Marked Sarah Coventry on the clasp and there. So we'll set that one aside. Okay, so first clue that this is not high quality is the like faux leather cording, but this is a genuine Jasper stone. So I would probably just take off the pendant and put it into a pendant lot. I have a bunch of like nice wearable sellable pendants, so I might do that. Put that in the maybe so I can deal with that later. Okay, what do we have he going on here? 
I actually really love Tangles, you guys. It is so relaxing to me. What is happening? Okay, well, let's take a look at this orange carnelian situation first. Oh, and I wanted to show you guys something else. You guys notice my ring? I bought this for $35, and it's sterling silver and abalone and gorgeous. It is adjustable. See right there? And I think it's marked. Let's see. I got this from the same vendor who sold that. So let's see. It says... 925 oh this is a sage in piece okay that's nice you guys know i love my statement finger neck or um uh, rings okay so oh 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 okay i see a mark right there you guys i see a mark and i'm gonna have to look up closer but these are some like disc genuine pearls and then this looks to be either agate or carnelian I can test it later but let me see what the clasp itself says real quick all right so the clasp says 14 over 20 and then the other side says GF which is gold filled so yeah this that's still really nice this means it's a higher quality piece and I would definitely sell that I want to test this though for like what these could be might be carnelian I'm, I'm thinking okay i see a tag here that says napier for ten dollars you guys know i love my napier so my napier so let's see what is going on here oh i see beautiful things coming out this looks so oh oh i see more beautiful things Ooh, this is so exciting I have not done a jewelry jar in a while and I'm gonna be honest my no sourcing November wasn't a huge success but I I did not really source for jewelry besides like the bingo I just sourced for um, things for my potential antique booth which I am on the waiting list now yay and um, so this was really exciting to just go today and get some jewelry jars and pieces um, for myself and things like that, like my ring. All right, let's get this. There we go. All right. Ooh, these have some lovely, elegant, ornate stations. Those are pretty. They look like kind of like Florida leaves and if I wanted to I could just cut the tags off but I'm wondering I'm curious as to what she was selling them for and that's kind of why I want to keep them on all right so this one doesn't have a tag right now but what is happening wait a second why is there a random pink what I am really confused about that because the other beads are just gold is this like an accent pink this is very long so it can be doubled there is a little bit of gold tone loss I really think it's beautiful I don't see a oh there we go so spring rain clasp doesn't say anything I'm gonna put this in the maybe I'm gonna look we'll see maybe on the bust it might look like I might give us some insight as to what it should look like with the pink or I'm not sure that's that's strange I think I would have liked it better without that pink to be honest all right this is it looks like a choker necklace this was ten dollars it is lovely so it has these blue like emerald blue and clear prong set crystals in the chain this is more of like a choker length so maybe like 16 inches and yeah I will sell that one there's no maker's mark on the fold over clasp uh, okay we have a big puffy heart pendant I don't think this is sterling silver but people do like their puffy hearts um so I'm gonna put that in the maybe look into that later all right so this one is napier is it Yes, it is. So this one is just a classic 
Napier chain. I believe this is like newer, like maybe 1980s or 90s with this bar um, tag right here. It says Napier. So I will sell that one. Okay, we have this purple cluster clip-on. We have this blue glass. Yep, these are glass. Cha-cha clip-on. It definitely needs to be cleaned up though. So we'll just set it aside to see if there's any matches. We have stretch bracelets. Stretch bracelets are not my favorite unless it's like really high quality but usually these end up going into craft for me so that's what I'm going to do. What is this? Another stretch and faux pearl lightweight craft. So this is the vendor's card, Madam D's Vintage Jewelry. Let's see. Okay, so there's her card. Free advertisement for her. All right, we have a long, um, just classic leaf brooch. I think this is in really great condition. I could sell this and I'm considering doing whatnot again. This would be perfect for whatnot, to be honest, because it's high quality and really good condition. It just doesn't have the maker's mark to like bring buyers on like an eBay site or something like that. So um, I'm going to put that in the yes or maybe I'll put that in the maybe and then <laughs> think of where I'm going to put that. Look at this. It's like a, oh my gosh, you guys, maybe I need this because it's like a gold dipped kale leaf. You guys ever make kale chips in the oven? <laughs> That's literally what this is. This is so funny. Okay, so we've seen gold leaf, like maple leaves and ginkgo leaves. And this is like literally a kale chip. Okay, I'm going to need that in my life. I'm putting that in the yes, but probably not to sell. I don't think it would sell for anything. And I don't even know if it's a kale chip. It's just, it's, it's just hilarious. That is so funny. Okay, we have this. Uh, Victorian Revival style and it's really pretty very ornate it, it's almost like a lava lavalier style almost but true lavaliers are very expensive so yeah that's this is a um, just a lobster claw clasp this seems really short and all the stones are plastic I'm gonna put that in the maybe so I'm not thinking about it too long. <laughs> this looks so yucky. I don't know. Is this vintage, you guys? Let me know. It's very dirty, and I don't think it's worth cleaning. To be honest, it might be celluloid. And I don't know. We're just going to put that probably in garbage. Because, like, who wants to craft with that, like, yuckiness? I don't know. That's kind of how I think. Now, I'm, I should probably have another bin for, like, garbage. Okay, so we have this matte silver tone, and then here we have X with the little C. A lot of people would say that this is Zayomara Castro with the X, Zayomara, Zayomara Castro, I think. But this is actually just by the brand Axis, which is a diffusion of Liz Claiborne. So Axis by Liz Claiborne is this XC. So not something I'm super excited about. I am more excited about like matte gold vintage 80s Liz Claiborne. That does much better. So I'm going to put this in the maybe. I might think about it. Again, I think that would be a really good whatnot piece. Okay, I see something lovely tangled here. Look at this. See something really pretty. Oh, it's a screw back. Come out, screw back. I, it looks like um, some opal, opalite. Um, cabochons, rhinestones. I mean, it's missing some rhinestones at the ends, but those are really easy to repair and replace in there. Um, with these, these severe of tangles, <laughs> I'm like hoping that there's something really good in here because a lot of times if people are sorting jewelry and they just 
see a handful of jewelry and they're like, oh, I don't really see anything good, they'll just put it in a jewelry jar or a jewelry lot and because they don't want to deal with the tangle. And there could potentially be something really good because I, I have found gold chains. Um, this little tiny, I have to repair it though. It's a gold um, chain with a pearl on it, or pearl stations, I should, should say. And it's worth, you know, a couple hundred dollars, but it was in one of the tangles, and it does need to be repaired because the little chain broke. And I don't know if I broke it while I was trying to delicately untangle like this, because it is a very delicate chain. Okay, well, maybe I can speed this up for you guys or something, but... Okay, there we go. That is so pretty. I hope we find the mate and I can repair it. Again, no maker's mark, but these are bezel set. Look at how lovely these are. That That is truly amazing. I love that. Okay, here is an untangled piece. <laughs> this is very fun tribal. There is some, like, I don't know, wear, because it looks like this is supposed to be gold brassy tone, but it's wearing to silver a little bit. But honestly, it looks... Like it fits the piece. It looks like it should be tarnished. And I don't think it takes away from the piece. They're puffy. Maybe some kind of tribal or Indian look. And I like it. I really do. So I think I will say yes, even if I keep it myself. Okay, we have this pin here. It is navy and cream enamel ribbon. Mm hmm. Is that a maker's mark right here? Uh, it's not saying anything. I'm going to put this into the maybe. And we have a fish hook clasp. I always look along the sides to see if there's anything there or on the hook itself. And there's not. This feels like... They are faux pearl. I'm thinking they're plastic. Lovely um, light pink torso twisted torsade like choker. I think I will sell that. I like that a lot. And did you guys hear me kind of like saying a lot of words as I'm determining what I want to do with it? If I'm able to describe it like twisted torsade, light pink, champagne, choker. Like I'm starting to like say how I would list it. Then I'm like, okay, I can um, list that piece. Okay, this is lovely. I love seeing these emerald green like art deco jewelry pieces. And they have been doing pretty well for me. So might be missing one, but it looks like it's very small right there. You can't even notice it. So, are you marked? I don't see a mark, but I definitely want to find a rhinestone. And, yeah, this is a pretty piece with the faux pearl. I like that one a lot. We have... Are these stick pins? What? These are the gaudiest stick pins ever. <laughs> these are not... They're like lightweight metal with glued on glitter no 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 okay these are no i don't even think people should craft with these to be honest they're just eh, yeah we're just we're just bleh. okay we have i love this faceted glass it is broken though but this would be perfect for a craft lot because all oh, these are so sparkly and glass and graduated that would be fantastic okay I see more tangle okay should we get this one out this screw back here I 
All right, we have more enamel on this four leaf clover. I think it would probably have a pearl or a rhinestone right there. So we will see what, if we can find another one, maybe it will show us what it's supposed to look like, but I will set that aside. Um, we have a big chic door knocker. Oh, and it's a clip on and it's Monet. I really hope we have this one. I really do. I like it. I like these Monets. Yeah, so I am creating my own little pile. All right, we have glass. And then again, it's a fish hook clasp. It doesn't mean that this necessarily was that old because this looks like a handmade piece. So they could have taken this from, you know, some older jewelry and repurposed. But I can see if this is amethyst, quartz, and maybe like a citrine. So I think I'll just put in the maybe and test it because I'm not sure if I will sell it. We have this clip on. These are heavy like metal balls. Interesting. We have a necklace. I would not be surprised if this was Avon maybe. Like the newer NR Avon or something like that. Huh, not marked. But yeah, I actually kind of like this. It's heavier than you would think. Like heavier, nicer quality feeling. And has really nice little dangle choker thing. So that would be so pretty on. Yeah, this is a true choker, like Victorian Revival style. Pretty rhinestones. They are just glued in, but yeah, I will, I will sell that. I could come up with a lot of really good keywords for that. Okay, we have a hair barrette. That's probably, I'm just putting in the maybe, but probably not. <laughs> okay, on my shoulder, watch over me. May Emerald by Sherman. I'm probably not selling that. Probably just going to put it into like a brooch lot. We have a cloisonne earring. I love it. These might only sell for $9.99 if I can find the match, but I like the black on the background. There we go. Okay, we have this said Victorian for $55. What are you? <laughs> what were what was in here for $55? Let's see. What could have been Victorian? So this one is missing a pearl right there. It might be somewhere in here, to be honest. And it looks like it did break. No, it just bent and you can bend it back. Let's see, are you, honestly, this feels like a Coro or a Lisner. Like that's the quality of it. I will put this in the maybe, see if I can fix it, see if it's missing anything else. All right, we have the, hoo, 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 this is so pretty. Already my nails are getting all messed up, but this is a three leaf clover with hearts. And I'm checking to see if there's any marks. Honestly, I feel like I could test this though. It looks probably, looks gold filled or something like that. Looks really nice quality. Okay. One had a tag on it but it looks like we have a giant tangle and this one says AK AKD what is that and Klein something <laughs> probably not what is that though AKD hmm this is very beautiful and it says AKD on each of the links huh what are you Okay, it's getting even prettier as I pull it out. This can't be the Victorian one because that this this is not that old. I think these rhinestones are glued in. Yeah. All right, but it's a very delicate chain. Where are you? I'm trying to find the end of the chain because if it's like a yes. Okay, so there it is. I was going to say, if it's a clasp, you can unclasp it and then try to finagle it out. But it was already unclasped. There we go. So yes, lobster claw. And then what does it say? 
Ann Coplick Designs. I feel like I have seen that and do I do I have a ring? I feel like I have a ring that's Ann Coplick. <gasps> but look at how beautiful. <laughs> I'm dying. I'm dying. This is so gorgeous to fix this little oh my word oh my word and Coplick designs oh my gosh I feel like it's special because it has so much like label or cartouche label tags all over it Oh, okay. That one is a definite yes. And I will try to put comps up on the screen. And if it doesn't sell for more than $20, I'm probably going to be just keeping it and wearing it. All right, we have this like cat eye moon glow. Uh, is it cat eye? Something. This is a n probably, a, probably a no. So this is just going to go into craft or something like that. There's no name. All right, we have another gaudy butterfly thing. What are you? What does it say? It has a patent number on it. Someone applied for a patent for these, these things. They're so cheap. <laughs> okay. And, oh, wait, wait, wait. I thought it was like a hair clip. What are you? All right, we're just not even going to look at that right now. Okay, we have another hang tag here. What are you? Claire's. All right, Claire's doesn't do well for me. So it's not um, sought after, not really great quality. <clears throat> okay, this one is broken. This one is also broken. What, what in the world? That is very yucky. Chrysler. Okay. That was a watch at one point. This one says Sarah Coventry in the little dangle. What is going on? Oh, here we go. Hook. Okay, so this needs a jump ring. This is probably 1970s Sarah Coventry. <gasps> this is so awesome. Yes, so it says say Sarah Coventry on that dangle. And look! Okay, we just need a jump ring and look at this. Oh, it's layers, it's dangles. Oh my gosh, graduating. I'm gonna fix that and sell that. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. All right. Ooh, hoo -hoo. what does this say? It says $10 shoe clips. So it does say clips. Otherwise, I could probably sell it individually as like a dress clip. Um, but we'll see if there's another one. Ooh, JJ, and I see a picture. Remember that one JJ brooch where it was a picture, someone put a picture of their cat in the frame and then there was extra cat hair in there as well. It was like super bonus. So what do we think, what do we think this is? Let's see. What am I looking at here? Oh, it's a dog. It's someone's dog. It says woof woof. Okay. So that's a JJ brooch. That will be a yes. <laughs> Picture and all. All right, this is probably one of those like healing bracelets where it does have some copper, some brass, and maybe like a silver tone something. I'm going to put this in the maybe. There's no marks. If it were to say solid copper, that would be a yes because um, men, women like to wear it for healing properties. This is not marked oh yes it is it says 14 carat italy eh, i don't think so you guys this looks like it's wearing see where it says 14 k italy yeah uh this is gonna be a no i'm just gonna put that in the no because i don't want someone to think that it is all right this one says west germany and it totally is oh it's a faux marcasite feather you can tell this is lighter weight i can't remember what it someone told me in the facebook group that west germany metal is i don't think it's aluminum 
something. But I hope I find the match to that one for sure. Okay, another brooch. And this totally reminds me of a Kirk's Folly brooch. If there's a moon and a cherub and rhinestones, are you marked? Hmm. No, but I would sell that. That's interesting. Celestial and angels. That could have meaning to somebody for sure. Okay. We have this one. Faux turquoise, faux pearl. And there is a maker right there at the top. Let me just take a peek. So it does say Wells 1 20th 12 karat gold filled. So I've sold Wells before. And that's good. So it is surprising. I'm wondering if these were original to it. I'll have to look more into it because I feel like gold filled jewelry usually uses like real pearls or real stones. So I will sell that. I'm just going to research that one further. Here's like a shell. He, she, bead, chip thing. This one's going into craft. We have this broken one, right? Oh, it's prettier than I thought. I'm so, oh, look at how pretty this is. I'm, I'm so in love with this. Oh my word. It's like pot metal. Yeah. I am so but like look at it, it's just broken I I'm I and then the enamel oh, this is gorgeous okay I don't know what I'm doing this with this but it's beautiful maybe I can turn it into a pendant oh my word I am in love with this you guys oh if you're not already subscribed hit the subscribe button <laughs> do it do it now before you forget um yeah okay we have a lot of like odds and ends here okay is this a copper bracelet let's see I mean it does look like it what does it say here it does say solid copper all right definitely needs to be cleaned this could have been um, an engraved name or something like that uh, I'm gonna put in the maybe because if it doesn't get it, if it can't get cleaned up then it might not do like it might not be worth selling. Oh, we have this ring. This ring with a marquee shaped stone. Are you marked? Okay, there is some markings in there, and it's probably like an eight and a half ish. It kind of looks space age. All right, let me just check. Okay, so it might be an amethyst. I think it just says the size in there. I'm not sure, I couldn't read it very well. Um, but we can test that and see. I will put it in the yes for now. I think I will sell it. All right, what is this? What are you? It looks kind of sterling silver, doesn't it? Okay, this is exciting. Yeah, this totally looks like sterling silver and it looks pretty cool. What are you? What can you be? What is going on? Oh, it's a belt buckle? What is it? What is happening? <laughs> And then it has all these little etched bell dangle things. Okay. Are you marked? Does it go this way? Like the belt go like this? How does this go? I'm confused. I need someone tell me how does this work? Is this a pin? Is this a belt? buckle. I'm so confused, but it is awesome and we will test it for sterling silver. I don't see any markings on the back. Definitely handcrafted. 
Wow. Wow. This is what's so exciting about jewelry jars or lots is you find things like this. So whatever it is, I want to sell it and it is awesome. Okay. Shall we get some more things out of here? Ooh, belt buckle. Okay. Made in USA. <gasps> oh, I like it. It has a banded agate and some shadowing back there. Gold tone, very Western. Yeah, this is awesome. I love it. I will sell that one. That is awesome. I see how pretty that stone is. Yay. My yes pile is filling up. This looks pretty. I haven't turned it around yet, but see that it's like has some height. It's adjustable and oh it's so pretty missing some clear rhinestones like one two three four five six six those can easily be replaced are you marked i don't know this is very like goldette looking but a very pretty i want to repair that and i want to sell it it's lovely okay Ooh, an owl with like flowers and leaves. It's a cuff. Okay, are you marked anywhere? Let's see. This one might be a maybe because I don't see a marking. There we go. That's cute. That one is cute. We'll put that in the maybe. I see Anne Klein. I see it. It is a giant lion clip on. Yeah, it doesn't say Anne Klein, but you can see that it is the Anne Klein lion for sure. Now this is very haute couture. Vintage Anne Klein does well. There is some um, loss going on, but we'll see if we can find the other one. All right, so I might do a few more and then I can do a part two just because the video is getting a little long. Oh, this one does say Genuine copper. This one was six dollars. There we go. There is some like tarnish deal going on. I think I will sell that though. I think that the look fits into that boho um, style. Okay, we pulled this thing out and it is misshapen. This one was five or six kind of looks brightened to me if I had to guess just because um do you see this discoloring of the silver tone Brighton does that so much for as expensive as Brighton jewelry oh 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 I caught the light and do you guys see that B let's see if I can there we go if it would focus, focus, focus. See that B in there? Brighton. Boom. <laughs> like I said, for as expensive as Brighton is, yeah, they need to do better with their, I don't know, silver plated plating. They're, they're just not doing the best. We're going to put that in the maybe because it's a hot mess. And while... Should this be the last piece? Oh my gosh! I am so excited. So excited. I'm so excited. This is so pretty. Do you see this malachite inlay? And it's like, oh, it's broken. Okay, whatever. We're gonna, we're gonna try to rescue it. Let's see what we can do. Does it say anything on the back? Well, I think there's a little something on the back. All right. Let's try to get it out gently. All right, so finally got it untangled. It is a beautiful malachite inlay. There's a little bit of a tangle here. It looks like it's missing the chain um, that would be attached to the hook part, but there is a marking back here does say 925 I believe that is so lovely 
simple, classy malachite sterling silver. I could totally put this on another chain because there are the two spring rings right there. And yeah, that's a lovely piece. I will put that in the yes and I will show you guys um, my exciting, my exciting, exciting cinnabar thing. And then we can do our part two for this. I'll probably untangle this mess for you guys beforehand since it takes so long, but we still have, I don't know, maybe most of the jar, but you guys can see that a lot of it is, is beads. Um, and then we did not get to that part yet, but I want to show you the surprise. So let me just show you right in here. There's my yes so far. So $55 for this jar. We have my maybes right there. And then you guys ready? You guys ready? Are you serious? Okay, so let me bring him over for you guys. <laughs> um, so I paid, I would say maybe, I think I paid like 60 something for him. And let me bring him over, okay? Um, and if you guys just want to Google <laughs> um, Cinnabar Camel, <laughs> and see what it potentially could uh, be sold for, you guys would be blown away. So I wanted to show you guys his eye right here. So his eye is made from mother of pearl and then another blackish brownish stone, but these are little mother of pearl. And then look at the detail here. You can totally tell that it is cinnabar by the layering let's go right over here so like there is layers in there and then uh, even just right here where it's like carved you can see that it's been carved a lot of detail going on and there is the black lacquer on the feet uh, really great condition one thing that can happen with cinnabar is if it's left in the sun it can actually discolor so one way that you can test cinnabar is you get a uh, q-tip and nail polish on the q-tip and you see if the nail polish changes color i'm, so I'm sorry the nail polish remover on the q-tip um, leaves a q-tip like a red then it's cinnabar um, potentially i wouldn't do that for something like this because it could potentially <laughs> be uh really really let's see Let's see if I can show you guys. Alright, so here we have a camel. <laughs> we have a lacquered cinnabar camel. This one th does have the black though as well, but it does have a lot of the same detailing um, with this like square looking detail in the background. So this one is being sold for $15,800. And then I wanted to show you guys um, this elephant here that is on eBay right now. It's not sold. I think it would be a long time to sell something this expensive. I wanted to show you guys this one because the eye is the similar as the camel eye. And this is the elephant right here. This one um, is similar and it's 3250 and yeah, can you guys even believe it? Like, okay, so I want to tell you guys, I bought this from my friend Chris. He has an antique booth and when I showed him the vase, right, he was, he was helping me check out and things like that. And I run into him quite often at like the antique store, or I'm sorry, the um, Goodwill and things like that. So I was showing him this and he's like, did you see my Cinnabar camel? <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> what are you talking about? So his um his antique antique booth is called Lucky Antiques and Collectibles. So what I want you guys to do as a huge thank you for him to give me just give me a great deal. <laughs> as a huge thank you for him giving me such a great deal, just go ahead and like his Facebook page, Lucky Antiques 
and collectibles and you will see things that are all in his booth. Uh, he regularly posts really interesting things and um, not, he doesn't necessarily sell jewelry but he sells things like this and just really interesting things. He had like a jewelry casket that I almost bought and he's constantly finding really interesting things. So go say hi, say thank you Chris for uh, showing us this awesome camel for our video. I'll give him a like on Facebook and tell him Rachel from Lily Works sent you, but isn't this so incredible? So yeah, I'm gonna keep him around for a bit. This <laughs> He's awesome. And I decorate my own house in the chinoiserie style. So that includes the cloisonne and also romantic French pieces and beautiful things. So I kind of mix the, mix the, um, just really beautiful things together and uh, so this definitely fit into that theme and yeah so there is my haul make sure you stick around for part two all right you guys do you want to see this camel as compared to my head like this is a big uh, cinnabar piece and most likely from what we've learned there's most likely wood in here now later on um, when they started realizing like, I feel like it wouldn't take that long to realize that doing lacquer over and over and over, drying over and over and over, putting so much time into it was a lot of, t like, just a lot of time. What they ended up doing was carving wood and then putting a thin layer of lacquer over it, and it would save them a lot of time. Um, but as you can see, just looking into the deeper details, you can see that it's all lacquer in there, and... Like, especially this one. This one's even deeper with the lacquer in there. So, yeah. So, that was really interesting. So, if you like this video and you found it helpful, make sure to give this video a like. It really helps this channel. And um, make sure you're subscribed. If you're not already subscribed, here I am hugging <laughs> the camel. Oh, and if you loved this, I'm so excited to show you guys something for part two. I'm going to probably bring it out. Uh, for the next jewelry it is so oh, it's so it's not like something that is like a once in a lifetime find like this but it is so pretty I love it so much um but yeah if you like this video thumbs up subscribe all the things give me a comment and if you're not already in our Facebook group go ahead and click on the link down below and join our jewelry Facebook group. We will welcome you. We are a very kind, friendly, helpful group there for sure. And it is a private group, so you don't have to worry about that. And, uh, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Make sure you're out there thrifting so you guys can live generously. Bye guys.